Freedomizer Radio, where freedomizers freedomize freedom. Good morning, freedomizers and friends, and even foe. Thank you for tuning in to Tiger Lily's Freedom Roar. I'm going to be your show host, Tiger Lily, for the next hour on freedomizerradio.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I've got a, a, my show is uh, prepared to um, talk about a few things that have been going on over the last week. Uh, as most of you know who know me, um, I'm a staunch advocate for liberty, justice, and um, just virtue. And I've had to redefine what virtue means. And you know, when we're when we're born, we're told that virtue is obeying our parents and don't push, don't shove, don't steal. Um, so basically, it boils down to two things: respect for property rights and the non-initiation of aggression or force. So, what we have in this world, and not just in the United States, is a lot, a lot of force against people. And right now, I'm, I'm located in Nevada, and as I speak, there are lawmakers that were elected that are trying their hardest to chip away at our liberties. This idea that we need to go back to the Constitution is absolutely wrong, and I can prove it. For starters, the founders, um, they did do a great, you know, they, they, they were very literate, knowledgeable, philosophical so philosophical people. Some of them were religious. Some of them were really pretty agnostic, actually, if you dig into their, their history. Um, half of them were slave owners, and that was okay back then because it was sanctioned in the Bible. And this, this country was founded um, by people who were based on Judeo, you know, had Judeo-Christian values. But the reality is that there is so much stuff in the Bible that contradicts the very basic uh, human preferential behaviors of the non-initiation of aggression or force and the respect for property rights. Let's talk about respect for property rights. That means from the very, very fundamental core principle of respect for property rights is that I own my body. You own your body. So I own my stuff too. Anything that I worked hard for to, to obtain, I own it. So this idea that taxation is something for the good of the good of uh, civilization, for the good of the society, it's a social contract. Show me that contract. I didn't sign it. I believe that I, as well as the vast majority of people, inherently are good. I think everybody is born basically good, except for maybe the outlier person that might have some kind of an, is born with some kind of an organic brain um, disease or, or injury. So it's so crucial to use our skills as critical thinkers and break out, break out, I beg you, everybody, to break out of this indoctrination of borders and government and elected officials and taxation. Taxation is just a euphemism for theft. Did you volunteer to give your taxes to the man, whether it's to the state or to the federal government? Did you? I would much rather be in control of my own money so that I can do the good that I want to do. And I, and I think it's provable that human nature is inherently good because 
look at look at uh, the tsunamis and the earthquakes of the world in recent times. The whole world comes together and volunteers their time, their resources, their money, their energy to help out the man in need. But I'd like to talk today about a group of people who have tendencies not to be that way, not to be virtuous. And let's talk about why they're not virtuous. The group of people that are not virtuous, in my opinion, and based on a lot of research and based on a lot of personal experience that I've gotten over the last two and a half years of being an activist, is uh, we've got two basic types of people, the rulers and the ruled. And with the rulers is the drones, the drones that do the dirty work for the rulers. So every time a law is passed, just think of it as more power to the drones. The drones are what Stefan Molyneux my favorite philosopher and I in my opinion the best philosopher in the history of mankind and he is alive today and he's starting to get momentum he's been doing this for 20 years he's got 50 million downloads on his YouTube on his uh, on his uh, website freedomainradio.com and he's got over 16 17 million views on his YouTube channel alone he's been instrumental in kind of enlightening me about this whole thing that we call government, the state, religion. And he breaks down virtue into the two universal principles that I just discussed. And he's got a free book, if you want to go to freedomainradio.com. He's got a free book called UPB, Universal Principles of Behavior. And um, you can even download that um, on audio, and it's free because he believes in a voluntary society and that's that's what he lives and breathes and I admire that because I don't live and breathe that yet but I'm working hard towards that there are things that I can't control I can't control the taxation that I have to give because if I do men with guns will come at my door and if I resist I will be they call it arrested, but that's really just a quaint word for kidnapped. And if I dare to try to defend myself, then they will execute me. And they will do it all under the guise of officer safety. And this is literally legalized criminality. These drones, uh, Stefan Molyneux, calls them kill bots. He's got a wonderful series of podcasts on his YouTube called The Death of the West. <clears throat> and in part three, he talks about uh, kill bots. He, I, I'm sure he made that word up. And a kill bot is basically a soldier, a military person, somebody, a, a police officer, which we have close to a million police officers, oh, taking police officers in the United States. And instead of calling them police officers or military or something, there's too much emotional baggage, he, he claims, he um, argues. Too much emotional art, uh, baggage to those words. Because we're, we've been indoctrinated to believe that these are heroic people fighting for our for our liberties, fighting for our safety in the case of police officers. But the reality is that there is two set of standards for the ruled and for the rest of them, the rulers and the drones. So all of these laws that are being inflicted upon us in society, in the United States and everywhere in every country, laws are rules, actually opinions by lawyers. And it's nicer to say law than 
force. Because if you don't obey these laws, and you're not one of them, then there will be consequences for you. And those consequences are fines, um, detainments, searches of your person, seizures of your person. Every time a police officer pulls me over, um, because I wear controversial headgear while I'm riding my motorcycle, it may be legal, but they don't care. They care about enforcing the law. They don't care about whether the law is moral or immoral. There's a great sheriff that I, I have a, a, a ton of respect for him. His name is Sheriff Mack. And um, he is out of Arizona and he tried to run for, for um, Congress in the U.S. and, and lost. <clears throat> but he's a constitutional guy. And, you know, libertarians and constitutionalists, they're a step in the right direction in the sense of liberty. But the reality is that there has never been a government that shrank or that stayed small without an enormous amount of bloodshed. And so we've been doing this government thing for 2,000 years already throughout our history. It's not working. It's time to think about other things. For example, um, I'm, I have a, a bone to pick with a specific senator in Nevada, Senator Menendo. He double-crossed the motorcycle riding community, and I was really pissed off about it because um, I did a lot of work to try to help pass legislation to, to um, give motorcycle riders the choice of wearing a helmet or not. It's not that I don't want uh, riders to wear helmets or not wear helmets. That's not the issue. The issue is that any law related to something like a helmet carries with it a gun. And that's what people don't understand. A lot of people tell me, well, yeah, I, I support your right for a choice, whether you wear a helmet or not. Um, but I'm always going to wear a helmet. Okay, well, fine. At least don't be a hypocrite and be honest to recognize that your choice for wearing a helmet does not put a gun at your head. But my choice for my headgear based on helmet laws, archaic, stupid helmet laws of which only one third of the states in the United States have, those laws are nothing but a gun pointed at my head for my choice. And I, I say this with a great deal of knowledge because I've been pulled over, I don't know, I have, I've lost track maybe 11 to 13 times. I've had a few cops let me go. They're, they're cops that have maybe, uh, in one case, I think he kind of like, yeah, I get what you're doing. And, you know, what do you want? Do you want, what will help your cause better? To give you a ticket or not to give you a ticket? And I thought about it and I said, give me a ticket. And, and I tried to disguise him. And I put them on YouTube. But the cops are, they're monitoring my YouTube. So what happened is that somebody alerted his boss. They recognized his voice. They recognized some of the things that he was saying. And even though I, I disguised and I, I said, you know, the names and locations are protected, are changed to protect the innocent, this, this um, kill bot, this kind of kill bot ended up having to get a lawyer to defend his job. He was going to be fired for giving me the option of whether or not I should have a helmet ticket. So even though there are some decent killbots, killbots that don't, you know, that may have a conscience, the vast, vast, vast majority of them are sociopaths. Let me show you, for example, this cop that rear-ended a biker. 
let me let me have you listen to this. This is this happened in Las Vegas, and I I just uploaded it on my YouTube channel, and I'm, I haven't checked to see how many hits it got, but like in the first four hours, it got like I don't know 70 hits or something. So I'm looking forward to seeing how many I've got. This um, motorcyclist had a recorder on his um, helmet, and he was on the strip. And there was a car that was um, that was trying to move in, and when the when you know the, he had his blinkers, and when you're in a motorcycle, you're pretty vulnerable. You have to be extra aware that somebody might be distracted, and you know you have to you know it's it's life or death when you're on a motorcycle, and these are the risks that we motorcyclists take. And I, for one, accept responsibility for that risk, and I am well insured. Um, my children are grown, my parents are dead, my husband, you know, is also retired and motorcycles with me. This is something that I choose to do because it's something that makes me feel good. So this uh, Killbot, a Las Vegas Police Department, uh, Metro Police Department police officer, got behind this motorcyclist and the motorcyclist kind of braked a little bit too fast because he wasn't sure what this other car was going to do. The car, you know, was blinking like he wanted to get in front of him and he was vacillating and, and it made the, 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 the motorcycle rider nervous. Well, in the meantime, this killbot had gotten behind this motorcyclist and more than likely he was running his, his license plate. And he was distracted, the, the killbot was distracted, and he rear-ended the motorcyclist. Now, it was a gentle rear end. I mean, the, 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 the young man, the motorcyclist, uh, managed to keep his motorcycle upright. And, you know, if you or I would have rear-ended a motorcyclist, don't you think that we would have come out horrified and, you know, our first reaction would be, oh, my God, are you okay? Oh, my God, I'm sorry. Let's exchange insurance information. I should, I should have been paying closer attention. I should have kept a better distance. I should have, I, I, sh I would have taken responsibility for rear-ending this motorcyclist. Now, isn't that a normal reaction from a normal person who has some sense of conscious conscience and some sense of knowing what is virtuous versus a psychopath. Listen to how this cop treated the biker. Hey, yes, you always hit your brakes like that when somebody's changing the lane. I'm sorry? You always hit your brakes like that when somebody's changing the lane. Yeah. No, he wasn't. He was way up there. Getting this on film because I am. So, yeah. Okay. Because I got your brake lights and we got the car clear up there. Yeah. Because I wasn't sure you saw me. You was coming in. Yeah. Because okay. you clear over on the white line. Right. Yeah. For Put my your brake lights on. Right. You understand that, right? For my safety, so. No, you stay up with traffic. That's what the thing is. I. I and then you don't hit your brakes right when somebody's behind you. What? Jesus Christ. You know that's against the law. I, I wasn't aware that you were that close to me, sir. I wasn't. But I can't stop that goddamn fast when you hit your brakes. Okay, I understand. So what do we need? Uh, what do you, what, what, what can, uh, can we do? What can we do? Yeah. I can write you a shitload of tickets. Okay, okay. how can I avoid that? Well, just next time, just drive. Yes, normal, sir. normal. Yes, sir. Just drive normal. Yes, sir. We good? Yeah, I'm good. All right, no problems. No problem, thank you. Okay, have a nice night. Okay, so the, the poor biker gets rear-ended. The kill bot blames him and further assaults, verbally assaults him and threatens him with writing him a shitload of tickets and the biker thanks him for not writing him a shitload of tickets. Now these are the sociopaths that are, that we are supposed to be honoring. These are the sociopaths that lamestream media glorifies every time they get killed on the job. And you know what? These sociopaths are attracted to these type of jobs and they get paid for that job.
So I don't feel sorry for any cop that gets killed on the job. I feel sorry for the victims of these freaking sociopathic, psychopathic killbots who have a license and the authority to do whatever the, the, the hell they want and not only get away with it, but in those severe cases, like when they murder somebody in cold blood, like in the case of Eric Scott, the West Point graduate that was gunned down at a Las Vegas Costco by four killbots, not only do they get away with it, they get paid time off. Where is the outrage? Where is MSNBC, CBS, Fox News, ABC? Where the hell are they? Freedomizers and friends, we need to wake up. We need to recognize the tyranny, the double standard, and we reach, need to recognize its origins and study up. Don't, don't just blindly obey the bullshit that you got in your indoctrination camp growing up as a kid. Oh, excuse me. Did I call it an indoctrination camp? I meant public school. Yes, in public schools run by public school teachers who have lots of power because of their unions, who can lobby the right, the right uh, lobby, I mean, um, campaign for the right officials who will do their dirty work, who will force us to have to pay our tax money to go to the name in the name of educating our children. What a lie that is. In fact, it, what, it was before public school systems begun, began that literacy, the literacy rate in the U.S. was astronomically higher than what it is today. It was something like 90% of people could read in the United States compared to what? Like 50% now? Kids not graduating from high school? And these constitutionalists who say that we need to go back to the principles of our founding fathers, oh my God, that's just, that's just not the way. We need, and, and people say, well, what you're advocating is um, anarchy. No. Or, or maybe yes, depending on how you would define anarchy. And Confucius said, that the beginning of wisdom starts with understanding and recognizing the definition of words. So it's not that I object to rules. I think we need rules. There's nothing wrong with rules. I object to rulers. Rulers who use their kill bots to force me into submission to steal my money and call it taxation, to mess with the fiat currency and, 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 and not call it what its true name is, which is counterfeit, and, and stealing from the unborn. I object to the lies that were being spewed by these rulers. And I'm going to include these rulers, our teachers. We must obey, our children must obey these teachers. And to think that we supposedly have rights, let me tell you, if you're listening to this and you've ever, if, if, you, if you had a hard time believing when you were a kid that there was no such thing as Santa Claus, let me tell you, when you realize the truth to the following statement, you're going to go into a, I, I hope you don't go into a depression because I went into a two-month 
hideout period, which is why I left Freedomizer Radio for a little while. But the reality is that there is no such thing as rights in America. No such thing. So if we go back to Confucius and we try to identify what the, the true name of these, these uh, meaning of these words, what is a right? Okay. It's things that cannot be taken away. Where, where do you get them from? Okay, God. What, what makes them a right? Okay, well, it's things given to us by God that cannot be taken away. And I thought about that, and I'm like, well, there's got to be something that I own. Because I know that if I, if, if I were to own a house, and I don't own a house, <clears throat> frankly, nobody owns a house, a home. No, no ruled person owns a house. Because if you think you own your house, <clears throat> don't pay your taxes on it and see who really owns your house. So <clears throat> I'm thinking, what rights do I have? Okay, how about, you know, the right to bear arms? Hell no. We've never had the right. There's, <laughs> there's no such thing as, as gun control. I mean, it, and that's what we have. I mean, <laughs> there's no such thing as how, how is it possible to say that you have the right to bear arms when most of the states you if you if you sport your gun and I'm podcasting this I'm going to stand up and show you my gun that I always have with me it's a loaded 45 that could turn a kitten into hamburger cuz I'm not messing around anymore how many states do you can you go and actually sport a gun like this without being harassed by a cop no state. I've been harassed for, for uh, openly carrying a gun in a state that supposedly it, it is lawful to open carry a gun. Some states just flat like Texas, they flat out say you can't open carry a gun. If you want a gun, you have to get a permission slip and you have to conceal it. So you have to hide your so-called Second Amendment right. How is it a right if it's unconditional, if it's given to you by God and it cannot be taken away? There's no such freaking thing as a right. And I, I was still in denial for, for months, and I thought, well, you know what? <clears throat> I have the right to think. Nobody could take my thoughts away. Guess what? Have you ever heard of ADD, ADHD? Do you know what happens to children in the school who get so bored with the silliness and the vile imprisonment that they have to submit themselves to? Do you know what happens to them when they get bored? They're labeled troublemakers, ADHD, ADD, and they're drugged. They are drugged to control their minds. I'm swatting at some, some you know, local legislators, and don't think for a moment that uh, I, I am a, you know, I'm like Ross Perot. He used to say, just because I'm paranoid doesn't mean somebody isn't out to get me. So I'm, I'm watching my step, and I'm, I always carry my weapon, and uh, I'm located somewhere, you know, not really in hiding, but. You know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm aware of my, very, very aware of my surroundings. Unlike people who are messing with um, some of the policies of President Obama and, uh, and are, are getting swiped away and sent to Guantanamo and tortured and killed and who knows what else they're doing to, to people who are exposing things that might offset the status quo. So... Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to have to go to a commercial break right now. If you want to call in and be part of this discussion, um, when I get back, I'm, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Chris Dorner, the cop killer, and some of the, the, the latest uh, news on him. 
and uh, and you know just to further illustrate the way that we have one set of rules for us and a completely set of rules for everybody else. The number to call in is area code 347-324-3704 and I'll be back in a few. Welcome back. This is Tiger Lily, your show host for the next half hour. If you're listening live, it is 11.35 a.m. Pacific time on the 15th of March, 2013. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you would like to be part of the discussion, the number to call in is 347-324-3704. I do see some lines that are that are um, tuning in on the telephone. So if you want to be part of the discussion, just be sure to impress the one on your keypad so that I know that you want to talk. Um, otherwise, it's I'm going to have to assume that you just uh, are, are listening. So I was talking about uh, a lot of philo philosophical stuff and about the fact that we in America, or no one really in the United States or abroad or south of the border or north of the border, that we don't really have any rights. We, we are all slaves to somebody. We are beholding. If we don't toe the line, um, there are consequences for us, but here in the United States, the consequences are nearly non-existent for the rulers and the, the kill bots that enforce their rules. And by rulers, I'm talking about our elected officials, but really they're just pawns, in my opinion. And, you know, it's a fact. I shouldn't even say it's my opinion. Many of them are pawns to the big the big money interests. Let me just take the, the helmet choice uh, uh, bill that is in Nevada, just as an example. Um, for example, in Nevada, as in one-third of the states, uh, there is what's called the universal helmet law. And so if you don't wear this gigantic bulky thing uh, that, that has a big old DLT sticker on it, um, you, can, you, you are at risk for being pulled over by a cop. So um, the bill, this year's bill, says, yeah, let's give, let's, give them, let's give the writers the choice to wear a helmet, but it's a conditional choice. And here are the conditions. For one, you have to have um, a safety training course. And I think, it, you know, I, did, I haven't read the bill uh, lately. I don't know what amendments it has. I know there was talk about adding another condition that you have to be, have more insurance if you want to if, if you want to uh, ride a motorcycle. Um, and I'm not even sure if the bill says everybody who gets a license has to have a training course. Um, that would mean people who already have licenses for motorcycling, um, unless they can prove that they've had a, a you know formal training, then they can they can be uh, cited at, uh, for a violation of that that uh, provision. So what these conditions are really, let's be let's be honest about it. This is a condition that is uh, intended to favor somebody else to favor the some services and products uh, to favor insurance companies to favor the training facilities that are offering the, these training facilities that's not free market that is not free market ladies and gentlemen that is now called fascism fascism is when the government works with the the powerful people to force us the ruled to do something that we might not otherwise do. Now, in a voluntary society, I personally took my motorcycle class just because I had never even put an ignition key in a motorcycle. I didn't know how to ride a motorcycle, and I know I wanted to when I turned, uh, I think I was about just maybe 42 or so. And um, I thought, well, you know, let me... First thing I, that came to mind was, hey, let me let me research what kind of classes, what kind of courses there are. I had money back then, and so I took the course that I thought would suit me the best, and it was, you know, it was at the Harley Davidson at um, in Las Vegas, and it was a three-day course, and I had um, a, a very, a very um, informative course. But in retrospect, I also see that it was a lot of indoctrination. It was like, uh, you have to wear a helmet, and you have to do this, and you have to do that. And it was not based on law. It was based on opinion. And so it was not real um, 
solid, the, the, the information was not based on, so, was not very well founded. Um, nonetheless, I did learn, you know, to, to ride a little bit and, you know, the, 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 the parking lot training and the, and the laws and stuff like that. And, and, um, so I, I was grateful for the training, but I didn't even know there was such a thing as going without a helmet. It never even occurred to me to ride without a helmet until I rode in, in Arizona and I saw people without a helmet. And I'm like, I want to do that because my neck is hurting. <laughs> and my husband says, no, 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 not yet, because we both kind of learned at the same time. And so he was very pro helmet and, and, um, and, and I too, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, I don't want to, I want to become a drooler, you know, but it was because of the indoctrination that I had, uh, that I, that we've received and fear, um, a lot of fear. So where was I going with this? Um, okay. So these, these fascist, uh, laws, these laws, are really what we have in America is fascism, and it just you know, look at the unions. You know, they, they they the collective bargaining things. The cops in Las Vegas are so unionized that they got the legislators by the balls, and these legislators are wanting to promote more and more stricter laws to give those killbots more power just to give them more probable cause, a thing called probable cause, so that they have more of an excuse to pull people over. I mean, for God's sakes, jaywalking? My friend, uh, David Stilwell, I don't think he'll mind me talking about this. He's the founder of Guerrilla Lawfare. You go to guerrillalawfare.com. Uh, that's, that's kind of a booming, there's a lot of membership there lately. He's doing awesome work getting the word out about um, about so-called rights and but more than more than rights how to defend yourself because it's really scary to defend yourself in the face of um, of killbots with guns and badges and you know all of the all of the force of the fear all of the fury and the force of the state at you how do you how do you deal with that so what he did is he went on a ride along with Las Vegas Metro Police Department and he, I, I don't remember how many people his, the cop, uh, the kill bot that he rode with, I don't know how many people he uh, detained, but during that whole night, it was a whole, I don't know, 10 hour shift, um, during the entire time, that kill bot only made one arrest. Guess what he arrested the person for? Not for jaywalking. He pulled him over for jaywalking. I mean, he detained him for jaywalking. But once the guy identified himself, papers please, ring a bell. Once the guy identified himself, the cop ran a search of him and realized that there was a warrant out for his arrest. Guess what his warrant was for? Because he hadn't paid another jaywalking ticket. What the hell to we think we're doing wake up people stop listening to CNN ABC all these lamestream media people who have an agenda and who are who are being who are puppets basically for this incestuous relationship between government big corporations and the killbots that serve them it's us against them, ladies and gentlemen. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, I still have 15 minutes left if you want to call in uh, or press 1 if you're, if you're listening right now, 347-324-3704. And this article <clears throat> came out on CNN, and I'll post that on my Facebook. You go to, I think it's TL's Freedom Roar or Tiger Lily's Freedom Roar. It's a Facebook group. And please join that so that you can get updates on what I'm going to be talking about on my radio show. Um, the writer of this article, he's a CNN contributor. His name is Van Jones, and he's the president and founder of Rebuild the Dream, an online platform for focusing on policy, economics, 
and media. He was President Barack Obama's Green Jobs Advisor in 2009. He is also founder of Green for All, a national organization to build a green economy. <clears throat> so, you know, a lot of people, you know, if I get misunderstood a lot. People think that um, because I'm of Mexican descent, they there's a tendency to assume that I'm a Democrat or I'm a, a liberal leaning person. Um, and because of when I start speaking and I start talking about um, uh, criticizing the, the police state, sometimes people think that I am a, um, uh, or, or criticizing, you know, marijuana laws, for example, they think that, that uh, you know, I, I can swing both ways, you know, so I've been accused of, you know, being a far right or far left. The bottom line is, I don't believe in rulers. Rules are okay, but we need to find a way to have a civilized society without guns. We need to all put our guns down. We need to all, but at the same time, we all need and have the, the human right to self-defense. We should have the human right to self-defense. I mean, the, the non-initiation uh, uh, of force or of aggression, that doesn't mean that if, somebody, that, that if somebody assaults me, I can't defend myself. But that's not me initiating force. That's me defending myself or my family or my children or my patients, for example. I was accused of being a bully to, to, um, to doctors. Doctors hated me. Oh, my God, they hated me when I was a nurse because I didn't bow down to them. And I, I took that luxury because I was a contract nurse. And uh, this whole idea, there's a, there was a horrific um, bill that was trying to get passed by our legislators to give doctors the authority to deem who is mentally fit or not to bear arms. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? I think the second topmost sociopathic group of people next to Killbots and, and, uh, and the rulers that I mentioned are doctors. Sure, some of them go in for altruistic reasons. They want to, you know, heal the world and, you know, borders without boundaries. And yes, it's not all of them. But I'm going to tell you, a lot of these doctors who go into these professions, they go into it because they are fundamentally sociopathic assholes who thrive on power. So, Chris, Chris Dorner, uh, you know, somebody was accusing me, you know, they, they said, I, I, if I would have voted, I probably would have voted for Barack Obama. Um, so, and somebody, I had a conversation with somebody yesterday or the day before, and he said, you know, I think the worst president we ever had was George Bush. And I said, well, you know, it was a coin toss between John McCain and, and Obama because, you know, and I, I really wanted really just just because he was black. I mean, face it, I'm going to be honest, and that may be wrong, and that is wrong to to cheer somebody on just because of the color of their skin, regardless of the color. But I wanted once in my lifetime to see a black person, a minority, uh, and, and really he's just half black, <laughs> to to be a leader, and let's see, let's see what, what you can do. Well, how's that working out for everybody? And people say, oh, well, Obama's ruining the country, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and he passed NDAA, which is the National Defense Authorization Act, that a lot of constitutionalists who are informed know very well, very intimately. Stuart Rhodes uh, did a lot of research on this and has done a lot of promoting to um, raise awareness about this vile act. Um, Stuart Rhodes is the founder of Oath Keepers, uh, um, thousands of, of uh, members on that on that uh, on his group um the national defense authorization act basically gives government the authority to point a finger at somebody and say i think 
that they are ter a terrorist. So without due process, just on the mere rumor, the government can go into your house, kidnap you, and there is no age requirement. You could be 15 years old and could be, you know, on, on the internet and, you know, just, you know, trying to slamming, slamming, uh, the system, the, the federal government. And these kill bots can come in, scoop you away to Guantanamo Bay, torture you, and execute you. And President Obama signed that bill. Even though he was one of the most vocal, harshest critics of George Bush and his Patriot Act, he signed an even more vile, or perhaps an equally vile, act with this National Defense Authorization Act. But guess what? The story gets juicier. Guess who introduced this bill? None other than John McCain himself. Left or right or center or libertarian, as long as you keep buying into this, we have rights and we need to go back to the Constitution. Wake up. We are all living in a plantation. We are all slaves. We are all being ruled. So this, um, this guy, contributor for CNN, <clears throat> wrote, In the wake of Chris Dorner's death, much of the talk has already turned to his political views. In the wake of a tragedy, it is understandable to ask why this happened. It is appropriate to discuss ways to keep it from happening again. But we should draw the line at suddenly giving an exalted place in our national discourse to the political rantings of a murderer. Okay, let's stop right there. Why do we draw the line at giving, at, he says, an exalted place, but what he's really saying is we need to not look at his, he's, he's minimizing the the manifesto that, that this, this other, this killbot of killbots wrote. Why is he minimizing that? Because, in my view, it's too painful for this man to recognize that, that there is some truth, that there could be some truth in the so-called rantings of this so-called murderer. First of all, he never went through due process. He was murdered by cowardly killbots who burned him alive, if that's even true. And secondly, why would we not want to get into his head to find out what made his what made him tick? That's that's irrational to me. I don't understand it. I guess I guess the only understanding is that you know we just we wanted it's it's a it's a psychological coping mechanism called denial. Let me go on to what he continued in his article. Before he met his end, Dorner took the lives of several human beings and wounded a few more. Okay, so. Let me say something about that statement. Where was his due process? He was accused of that. Where is the proof? That's an assumption that he's making. He goes on to say, one of those killed was a father of two. All right, let me stop right there. Where is his outrage for the thousands of killbots that are killing innocent victims within our borders by killbots who, under the guise of law enforcement, and overseas 
by killbots who are otherwise known as our heroic military. I mean, if you and I were to kill somebody, no matter what the reason, I mean, even in self-defense sometimes, often, we'll be villainized, we'll go to jail, and we will rot and be raped and just suffer inhumane conditions in these prisons. And by the way, the U.S. has more prisoners in its system per capita than any other country on the planet, and that includes communist China and former communist Russia combined. Land of the free and home of the brave? I'm not thinking so much. So he said before he, end, before he met his end, Dorner took the lives of several human beings and wounded a few more. Okay, so he's outraged about that. But, you know, like I said, where's the outrage the other way? So he goes on and he says, one of those killed was a father of two. The law enforcement officers killed were simply doing their jobs, keeping us safe. <sighs> what a Kool-Aid sucking statist animal this man named Van Jones is. How can he be so... And he's black! Does he not realize? I mean... I'm the first one to admit that our African-American community has gone through hell for their liberties. And that they, they do, they, the odds are stacked against them when it comes to facing any kill bot. And this, this ass clown writer, contributor for CNN by the name of Chris uh, Van Do uh, I mean Van Jones says that uh, law enforcement officers were simply doing their jobs, trying to keep us safe. What about the the two innocent black kin of his that got a hundred and two bullets shot through them by cowardly killbots in a case of mistaken identity? One of them got shot through the neck and is still in the hospital. Heroic? Fuck you. That's, that, just, that just turns my stomach. How can he, especially as a black man, his people who have been among the top oppressed in this country, applaud these law enforcement officers who were fucking simply doing their jobs trying to keep us safe? Were those assholes in Montgomery, Alabama who arrested Rosa Parks for refusing to obey the order of her day? Were they heroic people who were risking their lives just doing their jobs. That really chops my stick. I'll read fast and I'll not, because I just have, have, have a minute. Today, with the families of the dead still grieving, it is very hard for me to shift away to focus on Dorner's political views. The families of the victims are still in shock and mourning. Think of their friends and relatives who are still shocked and devastated. How much would it hurt them if they turned on the TV and heard, instead of tributes to those lost, pundits going on about a crazy man's quote-unquote manifesto? Should we should not be, quote, using this occasion to debate various theories of racial justice, not while the blood of the innocent is still fresh on the ground. Dorner's actions have invalidated his notions of justice. Killing innocent people is not the proper method to advance the cause of justice, period. I do agree with that point. Furthermore, why 
Why should any of us participate in giving Dorner exactly what he wanted? We should not validate his quest for attention by discussing the political thinking, especially while not while not while mourning families are planning funerals. Have a great day. This is Tiger Lily. You're listening to Tiger Lily's Freedom Roar on Freedomizer Radio. Freedomizer Radio, where freedomizers freedomize freedom.